Hi everybody, welcome to part three of our Kenwood TK80U. And I just got the other side of this board stripped off. I just wanted to kind of show you where we are here before we clean it and repopulate it with the new components. And I got a zillion comments on that I should make a new board, you know, design a new board and print it like I did on the Macintosh 2100 project. And really this project really isn't worth it to me to do that. And this board is fine, it's repairable, and I'm just going to clean it up and get it going. If this was like a really super collectible, super classic, you know, whatever, um, or and I was going to do more of these in the future where it would benefit to do all that, I'd do it. But really this isn't that important of a project to me. I do enjoy it, this is fun, but I'm just going to fix this board up on this one. So with that being said, let's get this thing put together. Well, that's the best I could do. A couple things worthy, worthy of note. First of all, if you remember in the, first, in the last video that I did, we had a 100K resistor shunted across this pot to change it because I didn't have a 30K pot. I only had a 50K. So by putting a 100K resistor across it, we were effectively turning this into a 33K potentiometer. Well, I ended up finding out that these two, R42 and R12, well, here's 42 and here's 12, those spaces were unoccupied. And actually, they are a space that shunts across that potentiometer. That's exactly what it does. So I clipped that off and I mounted, relocated those resistors to their rightful place. So that's pretty cool. They had planned for that. The other thing I noticed was I mentioned earlier that there was a solder bridge between here and here. I found the same thing between here and here. As it turns out in the schematic, that's necessary because that is bridging the connection between this capacitor and this section right here. So that was okay, so I put those back in, as you can see. So, well, the board's all set. There's a lot of flux on there, and these old boards like this were known for that. That's as clean as I could pretty much get it, unless I want to put some kind of coating on it or something, but it'll be fine. So there you go. Well, moving on to the chassis, I replaced... I re removed all of the transistors, the four outputs, even though these heat sinks can handle eight, you know, four transistors each, but they only utilize two spaces on each one. And on one side we had these MJ802 transistors, and on this side we had old SK, what was it, 3027s. And these are obviously replacements. These might be original, I'm not sure. These are similar to an NTE-130 or a 2N3055. Um, they're, like I said, it's, they're replacements. Uh, strangely enough, all eight transistors tested good. So that's a good thing, but I'm actually going to replace them with a set of 2N3773s. They're a little bit higher power and a little more modern they should work just fine in this application. Now you have to watch when you replace the transistors in here because one transistor in here has to be isolated from the heat sink. So you'd use a mica pad. The other one is not isolated and it mounts directly onto the heat sink because the collector of that transistor connects to ground, which the, this is connected to ground and to chassis. So one side you're going to leave the heat, the uh, mica pad on, and one, one transistor you have it off. The more I look at this, the more things I notice have been worked on. Uh, moving down to this power supply, look at that. More of those hack jobs. You can see where they did it to this transistor here, to this big resistor here. I'm sure the traces are going to need repaired again because of them doing that. Over here, there's a military spec. 
transistor that was put in here and then another one that was replaced over here. Over here I can see a transistor has been replaced so even the tuner has been worked on. Okay as you can see I have the boards mounted back up. I rebuilt the protect circuit as you can see and again all of this is just kind of default settings but the main thing I'm looking at right now I know our power supplies are pretty much working if this is connected correctly I should be able to get the bias circuit to adjust and again that was originally a germanium transistor and I replaced it with a silicon and like I told you I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have enough adjustment to get it to work properly the adjuster is right here and we should be able to adjust to get that negative three volts there this is your actual bias which is going to control over here so this is your offset adjustment so we just want to adjust this and see if we can get it to negative three volts so all right so here's our offset pot and I'm on the emitter of that transistor and my meter is down here so I hope I have the whole thing in frame. Um, I'm set up on the dim bulb, so what, and it's 40 watt bulb, so I would expect the voltage to be low. I don't think it's going to be the, the negative three volts, but I don't know how low. Maybe it's only going to be half of that, a volt and a half or something like that, but we'll check it out. The main thing I care about is not what, the, what it is, but the fact that we can adjust it with this pot. So let's turn the power on. And you saw the little bulb flash and it went very dim and negative 2.5 wow i think that's pretty much where it needs to be i bet you if we put full power on it that would go up i'm not going to right now <laughs> we're not ready for that yet but i just want to see if we can adjust this so let's see if i can get the adjuster here onto the pot that's always fun isn't it I'm kind of monitoring that dim bulb over there to make sure it doesn't change in intensity if something decides to go crazy. Okay, here we go. So let's rotate the pot and see if we get adjustment. And there it goes up. Remember, this was a one-turn pot. It's now a 15-turn, so I'm just moving it a little bit. You can see it is adjusting it. I'm going to leave this at about 2.5 because I have a feeling when we put full power to it, it'll come up to close to three volts we may have to adjust it so our offset is working now we don't know all the rest of the voltages on here and uh, nothing seems to be getting warm or anything like that so so far so good now again this is a capacitor coupled amplifier at least in the front end um, let me shut this off so each stage is isolated from the previous stage by a capacitor so you can see one there you could see one there and then this last stage is direct coupled so really everything we adjust here affects all of this now I, again I don't have these outputs in there yet but we that's our next thing is to fit those in I'm going to do a couple more tests back in here to make sure that we have these voltages correct and they sh should be a little low also because of the bulb being in there but if all of those are biasing up properly, then we can be pretty confident that we put this thing together correctly and everything's wired right. Remember, there were a few tracks that were supposed to be jumpered or solder bridged together. So we want to make sure those are all good. And uh, once we're sure of that, then we'll go do, do some more tests and install our output transistors and see what we get. Well, I'm pleased to report after going through all the voltages on here, they're all perfect. They're all about one to one and a half volts low, which is what we would expect with the dim bulb in, in the circuit. Now, the tuner circuit, we saw where it was worked on, but a lot of it was not worked on. <clears throat> this tube is actually getting warm. This one is, well, ice cold. It's not getting warm. The new Vister is warm down here. But this tube, I think, is bad. So that might be one of the reasons that we're not getting anything among other problems. 
But uh, this is exceptionally good news that this is all the all the voltages are right where they need to be. So we got it right. It's at least it looks like so far. I'm kind of keeping my fingers crossed. So I haven't done anything with the power supply. The vent holes on all of these capacitors are kind of popped open a little bit, but I did a preliminary ESR check and a quick uh, cap check on them and they all seem to be at least functional. Um, they don't look too bad, so they're hanging in there. These two I did replace because they had one of them was popped pretty bad, even though they both read uh, at least still like capacitors. <laughs> Um, but I replaced them on the other side, and I'll show you that. So let's turn this around. I'll kind of show you the wiring that we connected back up. So here we go. Um, and you can see all the wiring here that's back in. It's Once the, everything got cleaned up, it's pretty straightforward now. And uh, it wasn't that difficult to figure out where everything went. <clears throat> These are the two inputs, and they come from your preamp section and your tone control. Uh, <clears throat> your power supply rail is here and your negative rail is here. And you can see these two coaxes. This one I had to replace, this gray one, because it was too short. Um, just even that time, it was very tight to begin with. Um, so I just replaced it. Um, the other one was like a banjo string, it was so tight. And you can see here where I replaced these two caps here. And look how much smaller they are. And they're the same value as these great big ones. But uh, to give you an example, uh, let's see if I can show you. It's kind of hard without a flashlight. Let me get a flashlight. So you can see right there how those, see, see the vent hole, how it's popped right there? Same thing on this one. And even the output capacitors. And that one there. Not as much on this one, um, but that one definitely has it. So, and they're all like that. I mean, this one here, you can see right there, see it? But in spite of that, they read relatively okay. I don't think they're perfect, but the ESR at least is not real high on any of them. So uh, I will eventually replace them, but until we know this thing's working, I'm, it's not worth it. It's not worth messing with it. That'll be something we can do later to, you know. Again, this is more of a project now to just see if I can make it work rather than uh, trying to do a pristine looking, you know, restoration. Uh, so, yeah, it turned out really well. You can see there's our protect board right there, and that's good. And that also has the high voltage. Those two diodes you saw on there on the other side were the uh, the high voltage, which is somewhere around 150 volts or something like that uh, to feed the vacuum tubes. Now this is definitely going to have to get redone because whoever put it back together, again, you can see that how it's damaged there. That's just kind of pinched in there, so we'll fix that. But at least I'm a little more confident now that we can continue on with this project. It's it seems to be working somewhat. So let's get the outputs fitted into it and see if we can get this amp to bias up a little bit. Okay, just a quick zoom in on the camera. You can see I have the transistors fitted in here. <clears throat> and we're connected across the, the uh, current limiting resistors. That's these four white ones right here. They're half an ohm at like one watt or something like that. There's one, two, three, and four. So I'm going across one of them, and I'm imagining that with, with the dim bulb in and everything, we're probably going to have somewhere between 10 and 30 millivolts or something. And when I plugged it in, that's kind of what I was thinking, and we're pretty close. So if we take this, we're in millivolts, I turn the power on, you can see it jumps up to about 25, 26 millivolts. Not bad. And if we move over to this side, 
onto one of these resistors over on this side this one only have about six millivolts so that means we need to adjust it the good news is the amplifier seems to be working we're getting bias we're getting balance or offset everything seems to be working the dim bulb is staying dim but we have one big problem and I'm going to show you first and I'm going to let you try to guess what the problem is let's take a look these are the potentiometers right here that you adjust for your bias and uh, by the way I must make a correction on this this is a single rail power supply uh, amplifier meaning it does not have a differential a differential power supply of positive and negative voltage so the bottom side of the push-pull pair is referenced to ground the top side is referenced to uh, the B plus rail and the center point of the two resistors is offset to half of that voltage so if you have a for instance this is a 70 like 68 volt power supply so you're going to set the center point operating point of the two push-pull pair to half of 68 volts or 34 volts um, and I incorrectly stated that that is class A. That's not class A. That just means that it's a, it's a single power supply rail. But the um, re transistors are current controlled device. And so because of that, the bias point is based on, you know, the class is going to be based on what idle current you have, basically. So the transistor is going to be turned on and biased by these, which are going to control the quiescent current with no signal flowing and if we set that current at you know half of half of its max that would be class A but we're actually going to set these to a small idle current which is technically going to be a class AB and I want to thank John Audiotech for bringing that up um, but this is a class AB amplifier but it's got an offset power supply instead of the center point being at zero volts the center point is at half of the rail voltage which is why you have to have these capacitors to isolate that offset voltage from the speakers so I just wanted to make that uh, correction and I want to give John a shout out for calling that up we all make mistakes and I make more than most so <laughs> there you go anyway back to this so our bias resistors what do you what do you see wrong with this picture um, Obviously, these bias resistors look like they've been replaced at some point in time. But uh, what do you think is going to happen when I turn these pots? Well, give, give you a minute to think about it. All right, you give up. Well, here's the top side of the pot. Here's the bottom side of the pot. What's missing? The wiper and that's because the wiper on this potentiometer is connected to these two tabs so yeah this pot does absolutely nothing you can rotate that until you're blue in the face and it will not change your bias one bit so <laughs> whoever put these pots in they were tried to replace them put them in incorrectly now how could we fix this well we could put a jumper from one of these tabs to here or we can try putting a different potentiometer in there. I'm going to look and see what I have. Um, if I have something a little more suitable, I'm going to just replace these pots. And if not, we'll just put a little jumper in here so that we can correct that bias problem. So, yeah, it, we have six volts here of bias, but there's really nothing we can do about it. <laughs> All right, so let's fix that. Okay, so you see we got our adjustment here, and now it's I set it at 24 millivolts, whatever it's supposed to be, I don't know yet. And here's our new pots, and believe it or not, these pots were supposed to be two, these, these were supposed to be 500 ohm pots, but somebody put 200 ohm pots, and one was reading 160 ohms, and one was reading 130 ohms, so they were both bad 200 ohm pots. With the correct pots now, 
this is actually quite adjustable now. And by adjusting both of these up to about 24 millivolts, you can see we have a little bit more brightness on the dim bulb. And kind of just feeling the transistors right now, they're, they're still ice cold. But we are getting some, some tracking. And the thing is, I set this at 24 and it kind of floats between 24 and 25 millivolts. So the thermal tracking is still working on this which is great. Now the other thing I noticed is they modified this circuit. Normally the thermistor, which is this little device here, is in parallel with this resistor, but what they did was they put this resistor in series with this one and put the thermistor back here and then this resistor here, the pot, so you have a permanent shunt across that one and then the adjustment is here. So somebody modified the circuit and it is very, very, very adjustable. So I have no complaints whatsoever about that. Um, we're going to leave that alone. But if we go back over to this side and we can see it's, it's gone up. So we're going to adjust this one down. See, so we'll get on here and I'll show you. Just a little tweak of the pot, and we can get it right where we want it. Very good. So we now have adjustable bias, and everything seems to be working. So this is all good news. I'm almost ready to try some sound on this, or at least put a signal into it and see if we're getting any output. All right, I've set this thing up on its side, and down here I have the two meters connected to the two channels across those current limiting resistors to check the idle current. And the one interesting thing I found about the way this thing is wired is whenever you adjust one side, it affects the other side. So, for instance, if I turn this side um, up, I believe this side will go down a little bit, or vice versa. But anyway, you really need to monitor what I'm finding out. You can get everything to balance absolutely perfectly, but you have to monitor both channels at the same time as you're adjusting the bias point, or one side affects the other. And I'm not sure if it's because of the way they added this extra resistor and kind of rewired the circuit a wee little bit, or if it's because these both of these sides here share a common center point. And, you know, being, being higher resistance in here possibly can be causing that. I'm not 100% sure yet. All I do know is when you do get them balanced, they hold just perfectly. So I'm really not inclined to change it right now. I'm just going to leave things as they are. And my next step, and this is why I have this thing set up on its side, I'm going to go to a larger dim bulb. I'm going to go to the... Uh, stoplight bulb, traffic signal bulb, which is 116 watts. And that should give us pretty close to full energy in this. We'll get a little bit of loss, but it'll bring us closer. I just want to make sure nothing wants to run away before I let this thing totally off the leash. So let's put our bigger bulb in and see what happens. I'm sure that I'll probably have to readjust the bias and I want to keep it around that 20 to 25 millivolts because what they're calling for here is 75 milliamps and it, in that 20 to 25 millivolt range you actually are seeing about 50 milliamps of idle current over here and the transistors are staying cool I'm not seeing any problems we'll do a final test the correct way after this is all done, but I just want to make sure we don't let anything run away right now. So let me get that done and I'll be right back. Okay, we have the bigger bulb in there and uh, I turned it on real quick and I'm going to just show you where we're at with this. Putting less current limiting in there does make a huge difference. Remember we were at about 22 or 23 millivolts with the bigger bulb, you can see that is closer to 80 millivolts, so that's way too high. So we're going to have to turn that down. And I'll do that off camera so I can do it quickly and 
<laughs> without the camera in the way. Okay, we now have those adjusted back down to a reasonable level. And you can see the dim bulb up here doesn't even glow anymore. It had a little bit of glow to it um, when we were idling at that high current, but now it's back way down. So for the next thing, we're just looking at the, the main DC rail. We have to set our DC offset. And of course, on a normal split rail power supply, DC offset is always going to be set to zero volts at the center point. But in this case, it's going to be set to half of the rail voltage. So we have approximately 65 and a half to 66 volts. It kind of moves around a wee little bit. So we're going to take this probe off of the power supply and we're going to put it up here on the center point of the amplifier. And you can see that it's sitting a little bit low right now. So now we're going to go over onto the amplifier side, which is going to be this pot right up here. And I'm going to let me get on the pot. I'll move you back to the camera, to the meter. And we're just, the meter on the right is just still monitoring the idle current. And we're just going to adjust this till we get, let's call it 32 and a half volts. That'll get us roughly where we want to be. That's good. Good enough. Okay, so the good news of all of this is all four of our controls, the, the uh, offset and bias for each channel, is working properly. And uh, we can fine tune this when we put full power to the amplifier. We're still using the current limiting, but of course the bulb isn't even glowing at all because the current is much lower than this bulb <laughs> needs. So we have a little bit of a still limited current limited circuit, but not quite so much. And everything is working and we're getting very close to letting this thing off the leash. Now, we're still going to leave this bulb in here. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to connect a dummy load and I'm going to put a sine wave into this amplifier. And we're just going to check and see if we get any kind of sound. Now, remember, we haven't touched any of the front end of this amp. So the preamp, the line stage, the tone control, the volume control, none of that uh, we haven't even looked at yet. So we don't know if there's problems in there. And anymore, I'm no longer going to assume that it's untouched because I have not found one part of this receiver that hasn't been serviced. Uh, so again, possibly it was a very major failure. <laughs> catastrophic problem with this thing. So let's check that and let's hope we get some sound out of it. All right, we're powered up. We have a one volt, one kilohertz sine wave going into both channels. Uh, balance, I believe, is set. Let's see here. And tone controls are center. And we're going to turn the volume up and see. Now, again, this is on the dim bulb, so we're only going to get a couple of watts before the bulb starts limiting the current. But let's turn this up and see what we get. Okay, well, we have one channel, but we do not. And I'm turning the balance right now. So even though the, the pots are still pretty noisy at the bottom, but... This volume pot's not too bad. So there's two watts right there, but one channel is definitely not giving us any output. And again, the voltages all seem to be there on that channel when I measured them. So I'm questioning whether there's still something wrong with the preamp or the front end or something. But the good news is our little rebuild at least seems to be working. As you notice, that's a pretty clean undistorted sine wave there and uh, the bulb is starting to light up a little bit. And I can turn it up a little and then it'll start to crush over because the bulb is really lighting up now. But you can see even at 8 watts with the bulb in there it's still holding it really nice. And you can just barely see channel 2 starting to do something so I'm wondering and I think the volume pot is bad at the bottom because just moving the volume pot from zero to, you know, just off of the 
the stop, then you know, all the way counterclockwise, see that noise that it's making, which got a big rise out of all of you in the last video when I jumped. <laughs> it got a rise out of me too when I was editing the video. It was funny. Anyway, I'm going to leave this and uh, I'm going to post this video here of this progress and we're going to uh, get this up there and go to uh, our next video for a continuation. So as always, I wish you all peace, joy, happiness, and good health in your lives. I'm really happy with the progress of this. I never really thought that this thing would work kind of <laughs> after all the mess of what I did to it. So I'm really pleased. The We'll have to troubleshoot that channel why we're not getting anything out. Um, I really, this is just the first time we've tried this. And uh, so that's where we'll pick up where we left off here in our next video. So thank you all, and uh, we'll be back again soon. Take care, and in the meantime, stay well. Bye-bye.